What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Jake Shavink here. And before we get into this video real quick, just want to thank you all so, so much for reaching 200 subscribers on the channel. Really excited about that. Really pumped and really can't wait to keep this channel growing. And I really can't wait till we hit 1K because that's where all the real fun is going to start. Trust me. So if you know people, tell them to subscribe. And um, yeah, uh, let's dive into this video here. This week, we're going to start off with a, a way too early 2022 mock draft it's always fun really after the draft process has settled down a little bit from the previous season to dive in quickly to this new class it's always exciting to get into these prospects and, and talk about them so we're going to go through a round one mock draft here on this channel obviously it's too early for sure but it's fun this is for fun obviously so let's dive right into this mock and enjoy Alrighty. so as we get started here uh with this mock draft just want to shout out nfl mock draft database it's a really clean database can holds all the consensus mock drafts from the class consensus big boards team mocks you can do redrafts so this site is really really cool and two things before we start obviously don't overreact to your pick it's way too early for that and two this isn't necessarily how i would rank the class uh for sure the, the, uh, my big board will come out very soon and you'll get to see that but this isn't necessarily how i'd rank them also the order just came from a vegas odds so and, and this is the order that was set so if your team's too high, I get it. I'm sorry. Okay, but let's let's focus on the mock. So we're going to start, obviously, Houston Texans on the clock here at number one. Going to go Spencer Rattler. I, I know they just selected Davis Mills. I know Deshaun Watson's still in-house. But listen, like, the Deshaun Watson ordeal is serious. We have no idea how it's, how it's going to turn out. It's, it's a good chance he gets shipped out of there uh, no matter what. And Davis Mills, I just don't see the upside as a passer necessarily. I think he should have stayed in school, really. And I was just surprised by that pick. So Spencer Rattler, a lot of tools, potentially the favorite here of, of all the quarterbacks to be the top selected in the 2022 NFL draft. Obviously, we're way away from that. But still, I think his tools, his accuracy, his loose arm, he, he's just got a lot of that. And so just to put a, put together a consistent season, I think will elevate him to that number one spot for the Texans who might need a franchise passer very, very soon. And Detroit Lions here at two. Going to go Sam Howell for them. Uh, obviously, I know Jared Goff's there. I, I get it. He's got a lot of years left. But th this team passed on a young quarterback in Justin Fields in this past draft. I think this is the time now. They built the trenches nicely in 2020. Honestly, one of my favorite drafts, truthfully. And now, time to get a quarterback to be the successor. Sam Howell. Great deep ball. A lot of intangibles. He's got a Baker Mayfield-esque look to him. And, and you'll see that on tape for sure. So Howell... Again, comes in, gets to sit for a little bit behind Goff, and eventually become the starter. Number three, Cincinnati Bengals. I'm going Kayvon Thibodeau here for them. I just don't know. Outside of Trey Hendrickson, who I really think has a lot of schemed and cleanup production in terms of his sack totals recently, I just don't know if he's the true difference maker to be that, that elite pass rusher. I think Kayvon Thibodeau can be that. He's going to be talked about a ton over the next 11 months, so be ready for that. Very toolsy, quick first step. Excellent athlete, can retread his his route to the quarterback. He's got great change of direction skills. He'll run you down from behind. The effort is there. The motor is there. He's an exciting player. Can't wait to see him in action again in 2021. Number four, New York Jets. They've done a lot of great things uh, in this past draft here. We're going to get them an elite corner here. Derek Stingley Jr. Now, not necessarily the top corner yet in this, in this draft class. Obviously, we've got a long way to go, but still, I think Derek Stingley... His freshman season was outstanding. His ability to locate, turn, and find the ball uh, late in the route was excellent. He's got the ball production. He's got the ability in man coverage, loose hips, transitions well. I think he's got that mentality as well to be an alpha lockdown corner. Jaguars at five. Trevor Lawrence, you have the savior in town at quarterback. Now I think you have to protect him. I know this is going to be a crazy thing. Obviously, Cam Robinson, they brought back for another year. Evan Neal, 6'7", 360, huge, huge tackle. I think is great in pass protection. A little bit iffy in the run game in terms of a mauler and how he attacks that, but I think in pass protection, he's solid, and he would bring much-needed help to the blind side protecting Trevor Lawrence. Number six, Philadelphia Eagles. The secondary is poor. It is, and Kyle Hamilton would change that. Kyle Hamilton has a chance to be a game-changer at safety. His his closing speed his instincts how he finds the ball what he can do near the box what he can do deep 
and, and just just watch him. I promise. 6'4", 218, big guy, supremely athletic, and just not a lot of holes in his game, truthfully. So he's an, he's going to be an excellent player. Raiders at 7. I, I think DeMarvin Leal makes a lot of sense here, and I'll tell you why. I think Leal had a really good game against Evan Neal. If you go watch that back, I think he's got the hands. He's got the motor. And he's got that true defensive end type of aesthetic I think that the Raiders would like to see. So getting a guy like Leal in there, really Cleveland Furl hasn't been doing it for you. Get a guy opposite uh, Max Crosby, who has also, you know, passed that rookie season, hasn't done a whole lot. I would like to see more production there. Leal can do that. This might be the first shocker here. New York Giants. I'm going to go Carson Strong. I think he becomes the riser in this class. He's got that tall, tall, skinny aesthetic of Trevor Lawrence. He's got a fantastic arm, flashes that ability downfield. He's going to be able to fit things into tight windows with that arm strength. Still a little bit to go in terms of you know processing skills and whatnot, but I expect a big season at Nevada for him, and I think the Giants will see. Daniel Jones, is he it or not? We'll definitely find out this season. They've added Tony. They've added Galladay. This is the year we're going to find out. Carolina Panthers at 9. Charles Cross, size, athleticism, really underrated tackle from Mississippi State. I think you, you saw them go after Brady Christensen, who might not be a tackle necessarily at the next level. I just feel like outside of that, they didn't really address the outside. So this is a team that next year could be all in at quarterback, but I think they're hoping Darnold takes a step, and we're going to assume that here. And top three quarterbacks, in my opinion, are off the board. We're going to go Charles Cross. Atlanta Falcons, Drake Jackson. Unders, undersized a little bit. He dropped some weight uh, to get down to 255 pounds this past season, but I think he's got a lot of tools, good first step, great hands, a good spin move. He's got the counters there to be an effective pass rusher, and he's not just a speed rusher like Falcons are used to selecting in the first round. I promise he brings more than that. I think he'd be a very good selection there. The next Giants pick is from Chicago, thanks to the Justin Fields trade. And here, Giants are going to go get themselves a linebacker in Christian Harris, who I think can really take the next step at Bama this season. It, again, just a guy, I think, who, who is following in the footsteps of guys like Mosley. And I know Ruben Foster didn't work out, but he was a darn good player. Again, a guy who's got instincts and range and speed, just a combo, and he's he's a hard hitter. And, and they're missing that in, that in this defense, and I think Harris can be that for them. Very exciting. Arizona Cardinals. I think they got to go corner here, truthfully, d- despite what they've thrown at their secondary in recent years. Kyer Elam, 6'2", 196, fluid in man coverage. He's got that height, weight, speed going for him. It, hard to imagine he's not a top 15 player by next year. I, I truthfully believe that he is going to be a fantastic player, and Cardinals need it in a division that's getting harder and harder to compete with, for sure, with, with Lance and Wilson and, and now Stafford in their division. They need some help there, for sure. Washington football team. Team that just really doesn't have a lot of holes on it. And when you look at it, you know, they're really missing QB. That's what they're missing, is quarterback. Ryan Fitzpatrick? Taylor Heineke? I don't think they're long-term solutions. We're going to go Keaton Slovis here. This might be a little more shocking. Didn't have a great 2020 season. Rumors of a shoulder injury. I think you see him flash the ball placement and the accuracy from 19 especially. And his ability to maneuver around the pocket and make plays outside the pocket is something that Washington does kind of have in Heineke. But I think Slovis is a better reader of the field, and he will flash that that accuracy at every level much better than a guy like Heineke will. I think the Washington football team makes this move here with Slovis, finally, to get their team on the right track for a franchise quarterback. Minnesota Vikings. I, I do like George Karlaftis here. I, I know... Corner is staring them in the face still with, you know, Jeff Gladney's situation going on, which is not good at all. But I think Karlaft is seven and a half sacks in 19. Obviously didn't get quite going in 2020, but I expect him to bounce back. Another guy with heavy hands, physical pass rusher, who can do a lot on that defensive line. Pittsburgh Steelers at 15. Rasheed Walker. Guy who I think should be getting more buzz. I, I know we're so early, but still... Just a guy with good prototypical size, good hands, high football IQ. Went back to school, 
Do we really think Chooks Okorafor and Zach Banner are the solutions to tackle? Neither of them are signed beyond 2022. I know they brought in Dan Moore in the draft. Still, I would like to have a top-tier player at the position. Rasheed Walker can be that for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Another team that's obviously got quarterback situation to figure out in the future as well, but here we're going to go Walker. Maybe Big Ben's got two years left in him. Speaking of quarterbacks, we're going to go here with one for the Denver Broncos. We're going to go Malik Willis, a player who is gaining steam already because of the arm talent, because of what he can do as a runner. We're going to hear a lot about him all season long at Liberty. Again, the loose arm, he's got the talent to sling it all over the yard, and he's going to make plays outside the pocket, and he's going to make defenders miss in space with his speed, agility as a runner. So, again, complete package just needs more refinement. Denver, it's hard to peg them for anything really outside of quarterback. Drew Locke, we're just not sure about him at this point. And that's where we go. Chargers at 17. This just feels like something we're going to plug in just because it makes a lot of sense. Jalen Weidermeyer at, at the tight end from Texas A&M. Texas A&M got a lot of prospects this year, folks. They got a lot of top-tier prospects. Consensus tight end one right now. Truthfully, a, a guy who comes in and replaces Hunter Henry as the big physical guy, you're going to go win in contested spots. He's going to give enough effort as a blocker. You're going to see him this year make a lot of plays, and, and he's an exciting playmaker in an offense that continues to and should build around Justin Herbert. Boy, it's really hard to not go corner here for the Patriots, but I'm going to go with the first receiver. And this is something to watch because I think the last two classes have spoiled us at receiver. Chris Olave potentially could be the wide receiver one in this class. Last year, if he came out, I think he's fighting with Elijah Moore for wide receiver five, truthfully. But again, a guy who's a smooth route runner, he's a vertical threat as well, can win at all three levels, good separator, good hands, just a well-rounded playmaker, in a New England offense that's really still kind of lacking that wide receiver one. And I think he can be that for that offense. Pretty good duo with Mac Jones, potentially. So New Orleans Saints at 19 went through their roster, went through the you know salary cap table on them. We're going receiver. Garrett Wilson. Great athlete, good explosiveness, a little bit undersized, but, but a guy who can be a really, really good wide receiver too and has that potential. I'm not as bullish on him as others. At this point in the process, but as a wide receiver two for an offense behind Michael Thomas, sounds great for them. Yes, they have other holes. This felt like the most pressing one with a lot of players heading into free agency in 2022. This is the first, this is now the second edge, I should say, of three Philadelphia first rounders. Again, potentially three, maybe two, depending on how much Wentz plays for the Colts, but I think it might, I think it's going to be three. So the first one here, one of the from Miami. Eagles are going to go with a corner here in Ahmad Gardner, nicknamed Sauce. Man in zone versatility, good click and close. He's got a great feel for when to transition downhill out of his zone. When you have that football IQ, the instincts, and the production at the catch point that he has, this is a first-round player and comes into a Philadelphia secondary that really needs him. Easy for them there. 21, Dallas Cowboys. I'm going to go Jordan Battle, safety of Alabama, 6'1". He's just a thick player at the position, truthfully. Maybe a little bit of a reach, but this is something they need in the secondary. They need more help there. Still not convinced they have a cornerback one in-house, but again, getting a safety like Battle, who can do a lot of different things for you, is a good pick for them. Jets are back on the clock from Seattle in the Jamal Adams trade. We're going to go with Kenyon Green, another Texas A&M guy. This guy, again, may get the Elijah Vera Tucker treatment. He hasn't played tackle yet. He's played interior. He's probably a top 10 player for me right now because of how good he is in a phone booth, the way he can recover, mirrors his feet and hands. He can mirror rushers. He's, he's quick to recover. He's got the lateral agility skills in the phone booth. He is outstanding. Maybe could play tackle. We'll see. But again, another way to build a wall in front of Zach Wilson at quarterback. Okay, Titans on the clock now. Justin Ross coming back from an injury. It should be interesting to watch him return. Size, speed, good hands, catch radius. Great pairing with A.J. Brown. This team still needs help at wide receiver too. They get a pretty darn good one here in Ross to really lengthen Ryan Tannehill's career down the stretch here for him. 
Again, Ross and Brown, pretty darn good one-two punch. Eagles are finally going to finish up here with their third first-round pick. We're going to go quarterback, Desmond Ryder. I know he has a lot of fans uh, already. And again, outside the numbers, down the field, he's great. He needs to work on consistency over the middle of the field, getting the ball with touch over linebackers. That's the biggest thing for him is consistency over the middle of the field. If he can develop that this season for the Bearcats, there's a chance he's in the first round. There's a lot of guys, truthfully, in this draft class right now, even at the top, when we talked about Howell and Rattler, that are mostly end of round one, day two guys at this point as prospects. Someone's going to make that leap. Who's it going to be? We'll see. But I think Ryder, again, for Philly, when you have three first round picks, one of these is probably going to be quarterback to potentially compete with or take the job from Jalen Hurts. Cleveland Browns. We're going to go with my Jai Sanders here. Guy I think a lot of people liked even later in the process last year, decided to return. Another guy who's more of a power rusher than a speed rusher, but again, good array of counter moves. And for a team that's lacking something opposite Garrett, I know Clowney and Tack McKinley are in-house, but still, I think you get a guy who consistently get into the backfield like Sanders can. Maybe not in the same way Garrett does, but again, very effective doing so. And I think Cleveland would be very happy with that selection. Green Bay Packers, for somebody who runs a Packers very Packer-centric channel at this point. It was hard to peg them for this, truthfully. I, I really didn't know what direction to go. And I decided on edge. Going Zach Harrison. Still a lot to prove before he's a, a real, true, locked-in first-rounder. But there's a lot of tools to work with. And the Green Bay Packers love tools on the edge. Like 6'6", 265, I believe. You can correct me if I'm wrong there. But Zach Harrison and Rashawn Gary sounds really good in the future here for the Packers. If especially if Harrison can hit his ceiling. And I know the Smith brothers are in-house. I just imagine 2022 offseason with the cap issues, it's going to be a lot of teardown. So I think starting with pass rusher, and again, the Packers go premium position in the first. That's something they always do. Harrison fits the premium position there. Miami Dolphins. This is actually not their pick, believe it or not. This is from San Francisco in the in the trade up for Trey Lance. So uh, they, they moved their, their original one to Philly. We're going to go with Tyler Linderbaum here. Maybe a little early for a center. I get it. But this is right now one of the bigger needs for, for the Dolphins. I, I, there are not a lot of holes on this roster. I think this roster is really set to compete in the AFC. Get a guy like Linderbaum in there. He's got a lot of tools. He's, he's, got, he's very physical, high motor. Work on his technique this year. But I think at Iowa, he's going to be fine with technique eventually as he continues to develop his game. Sounds like a perfect need team need and, and selection there. So like that one a lot. Baltimore Ravens at 28. Had them thinking corner here, but they're just so loaded there that they really don't need to go in that direction. We're going to go Jordan Davis, a guy I think could have been potentially defensive lineman one in this past class because I think he's that good. I think he's he, strong at the point of attack. And I mean strong, strong, like grown man strong. Can take on the double teams, can split them. It's just a very, very excellent player on the defensive line, a position that, again, is going to be a, probably a little bit weaker again this year. So for the Ravens, who have Calais Campbell and, and a couple others, free agents in the next couple seasons, time to beef up this D-line again. Jordan Davis be a perfect fit there. Buffalo Bills at 29. How are we not excited? Andrew Booth Jr. If you guys haven't seen this guy play yet, you will. This dude has insane in-air athleticism, tracks the football well like a receiver, makes plays on the football like a receiver. It is insane what he can do. And one-handed catches, you know, just he looks like he's floating sometimes when he's in the air to make plays at the catch point. It, it is impressive. If he can develop a little short area quickness, a little more football IQ, he, he's going to be the full package at corner. He's very exciting already. Can't wait to see what he does this year with Clemson. Detroit Lions are back in the clock at 30 from the Rams. So, what do we think here for them? Got to go wide receiver. The room is bare, and I mean it is bare. Like, you talk about a really just completely bare room at receiver. A lot of people think that Amon Ross St. Brown can be a starter. Like, Brashad Perriman, the, the, the room is weak. George Pickens, deep threat, has some effort issues. 
he, he's very hot and cold when he, when you look at him not get, when he's not getting the ball versus when he is. But again, he flashes the catch radius. He makes spectacular catches downfield for Sam Howell, who we drafted earlier for the Lions. A deep ball threat for a deep ball thrower. Pretty darn good match, if you ask me. So Lions, after building in the trenches, like we said, get their guy at quarterback, get their guy at receiver. It's time to start and really build this thing up to being a contender. Buccaneers at 31, another team that just really didn't have a lot of holes. I thought about Davis for them with Sue. His deal could be voided after this year. But I saw Carlton Davis, free agent, after this year. Saw, you know, others potentially free agents after 2022. Decided Josh Job. Let's go that direction for Tampa Bay. Again, a team that just really doesn't have a lot of holes, truthfully. And they continue to be able to build with a type of best player available approach. Josh Job, I think he's patient when you look at his technique at corner. And I think it's only going to get better under Nick Saban. Guy who could sneak in the first round and be a productive player on the outside. And Tampa Bay gets one there. Chiefs finishing up. Always got to go spicy when the Chiefs are on the clock. Okay. Got to go spicy here. We're going Traylon Burks, a guy who I think can push for wide receiver one. Size, speed, run after catchability. He's going to eat up cushion quick. He makes the tough catches. He's used in a variety of ways too, especially for a guy that big with his speed. To be used as a gadget player as well is scary. And what offense could do that at a high level and really make him a productive player opposite Tyreek Hill? Wow, the Chiefs. Sounds pretty good to me. We're going Traylon Burks for the Chiefs. So real quick, we'll run through this thing one more time. Rattler to the Texans, Howell to the Lions, Thibodeau to the Bengals, Stingley to the Jets, Evan Neal goes to the Jags, Kyle Hamilton to the Eagles, DeMarvin Leal to the Raiders, Carson Strong to the Giants, Charles Cross to the Panthers, Drake Jackson to the Falcons, Christian Harris, the second Giants pick, Kyrie Elam to the Cardinals, Keaton Slovis to the football team, George Karlaftis to the Vikings, Rasheed Walker to Pittsburgh, Malik Willis to Denver, Jalen Weidermeyer to the Chargers, Olave to the Patriots, Garrett Wilson to the Saints, Ahmad Gardner to the Eagles. Second selection, Jordan Battle, the Cowboys. Kenyon Green with the Jets' second pick. Justin Ross to the Titans. Desmond Ryder finishes up the trio of Eagles selections. Majai Sanders to the Browns. Zach Harris from the Packers. Tyler Linderbaum to the Dolphins. Jordan Davis to the Baltimore Ravens. Booth to the Bills. Pickens to the Lions. Job to the Buccaneers. And Traylon Burks to the Chiefs. And that is our early 2022 mock draft. So, if you guys enjoyed this video, hope you did. Just leave a like if you could. Helps out the algorithm for me, especially. And subscribe if you're new. A lot more NFL draft stuff coming as well. Packers fans, I haven't forgot about you. I promise. We've got a lot more stuff coming there too. So as we expand to all levels of the NFL and the NFL draft, I'm excited for that. So tell people you know, if you're an NFL fan, an NFL draft fan, tell them to come here. We're going to have a lot of fun on this channel. Can't wait for all the surprises in store, especially once we get to 1K. So hopefully we get there soon. But again, I appreciate you all so much uh, for reaching 200. It, it, it's awesome. I can't wait to see the growth continue. Appreciate you guys. I will see you very, very soon. Farewell.